Hi there everybody, it's Cassie. This is the video three of me recording one right after another, and I probably am putting these out one day at a time, but this is going to be in Black Dragon. If you don't know what Black Dragon is, I will leave all of the details in the description below. The creator, Niran, is absolutely amazing. They have a Patreon, they have a Discord group where they are always very responsive, but just make sure that you read all of their blog as well, or their basic FAQ, because they probably answer any questions that you have there. Um, I am not super knowledgeable. This is a lot of stuff that I learned on my own time, uh, but it's stuff that I figured I could still pass on to y'all. If you still have questions, again, check out the blog, leave a comment below, or also join the Discord group, because I highly recommend it. This is my favorite viewer now uh, for photos and for machinima. I use it for everything. <laughs> um, if you want to look at my Flickr of photos that I've taken in Black Dragon, I have a full album of it. You can just see a huge difference of my older photos compared to quality in Black Dragon. It is just night and day. Sorry, I'm, I'm starting to get worn out from talking, and I've been sick. So uh, if I'm taking frequent breaks, that's why. Uh, but today we are going to be, uh, this video, we are going to be talking about the built-in poser in Black Dragon uh, for the Second Life viewer. So if you don't already have it showing on your toolbar, you right click down here or up above your toolbar buttons. And just like Firestorm, they have them right here. So we have about lamb, land, not lamb, appearance, avatar, build, camera controls, chat, destinations, environmental editor, which is a good one to have. Let's put that up there. Gestures, grid status, how to, inventory, machinima slide, sidebar, map, Marketplace, Minimap, My Environments, that's a good one to have as well. Pathfinding Characters, Pathfinding Link Sets, People, Picks, Places, Poser, Preferences, Profile, Report Abuse, Scripts, Search, Sky Editor, Snapshot, Speak, Walk, Run, Fly, and Water Editor. So, we're not focusing on Water Editor today. We're not working on any of these. If you ever do want to get to your quick settings, like say you're lagging too much and you just want to lower things really quick, go to your F1 and most likely you'll need to lower your shadows as well as your depth of field. I've noticed if my depth of field is way too high, I completely freeze. So while you're working on stuff, maybe just lower it until you're done with your pose and then you can raise it when it's time to take a photo. You hit F1 to close it again and it's gone. You can also get to that by hitting Dragon go to edit and go to preferences. Okay, anyways, we are going to be working with the poser. Um, you can either make your own pose completely or you can start with the base pose and use that. Right now I am on an SE motions pose and this is 496. I have no idea what that came from, but that's the number that it is. So uh, you can also drag around your toolbars if that's easier for you. I'm fine with how they are right here. We are going to open up this poser. I like to use camera controls a lot because if you can rotate your camera, that's pretty cool too. I love that. This view is so awesome. So anyways, we have our poser right here and you can see your name, Cassie Diddles. So we are going to hit start posing once we are happy with our pose. So it'll completely reset your skeleton all like that for like a real quick second. But this is all local, so no matter how you edit your shape from here on, no one else can see it except for your screen. So I can see this, um, everybody else would just see the pose that I have currently, but now I can actually play with all of these sliders and settings. So we have skeleton, collision volumes, attachment bones, so these are the extra pieces right here, the, the basic skeleton pieces here. Uh, but we have all of them like super detailed right here. Like you even have tail, you have wing, you have hips, hind limbs, everything. It is so awesome. It is so neat. If you want to rotate your avatar completely, use the pelvis option and you can rotate on the axis. You can always hit reset if you want it back to how it was. You can adjust your spine. So uh, each one kind of works different. We have the X, Y, and Z axis. So Y brings you up and down, X brings you left and right, and Z brings you forward and backwards, like twisting. You can reset that again too. Again, head. This will tilt your head left and right. This will tilt it up and down, and this will turn it left and right. 
Okay, let's lift it a little bit and make it a bit more casual. So again, no one else can see you doing all this except for yourself or if you stream it. So if you watch any of my videos, then that's where you can see all that. Uh, if you have a part that can move, like say your eyeball, I froze. Okay, I'm back, I think. Am I back? Okay, now I'm back. Alrighty. So let's click R. My frame rate dropped so badly. Okay. So if we click our eye, now we have this position clicked. So now you can move the whole position of your eye needle or something. Let's lower our... Okay, that's already much better. <laughs> So you can see I moved my eyeball all the way out there. So how did I do that? This is with the position right here. Let's reset our selected position and you can move stuff around. You can move it that way. You can do that with any piece that isn't the main piece of the skeleton. So no head, no spine, uh, no torso. It can only be the uh, little add-on pieces. So I think we can also do it with chin. So if we want to move our chin out of place, you can do that as well. You can pretty much readjust your whole body this way. I don't use it very often, <laughs> uh, but you can do it if you want. We also have scale, so if you want to make things bigger, you can. But again, I really only do this for hips in photos. Like If you need to for like a weird pose or something, you can do that. Um, but I normally work with rotation. So if I want to have things a certain way, in a photo, and a lot of these look really funny. I love messing with these. Like sometimes they're just really fun to gyazo, uh, but you can easily do that. But let's say we want to just completely change this pose. Like maybe we're not happy with how it looks, so we can change it. So let's see, we'll go scroll all the way down here and we're going to go to the hip. So hip left, so if it's going to be stage left, or no, mirror, it, <sighs> Stage left, yeah, so if you're looking at the back right here, this is your left hip, this is your right hip. So this is going to be the left hip that you edit. So if we want to move this around, we can. We can adjust it any way we want. It can go all the way up too, it's very flexible. It makes you a contortionist. It does obviously break your legs, but it's really great for subtle editing. You can turn it inside and out, and then you can also twist it. So if you want to have it facing a different way, you can do that. You can also mess with your knee. So let's go on down here. If we want to change up how the knee looks, again, we can do that. Just completely change it up, break the knee if you need to. And if you hit reset, it should put you in a T-pose position. So it won't go back to uh, the pose that you originally had unless you completely start over. It'll go to like a T-pose uh, position with your hands, hips, legs, everything, just one at a time. So if we wanted to do that with our hips, if we wanted to do that with our knees, we just hit reset, ankles, reset, stuff like that. Okay. This also means that if you are wearing bento wings, tails, etc., you can also adjust those, which is really cool too. My favorite thing to use these for is for hands because it is just such a subtle thing. SC Motion already does a great job with their hands, uh, their finger positions, but now you can also completely move stuff around too. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Let's go over here. So this hand right here. We are touching the ring finger right now. We have one, two, and three on each one. So if we're looking at the hand right here, froze again. Okay, so we have one. So you can see right here which part is one. That moves the full base of the nail at the main knuckle. We have two, and this one moves the next knuckle. So right at that joint. And then we have three, and that does the top knuckle near the nail. 
So it gives you a lot to edit and work with. It is very, very detailed. You can change every single thing intricately. It works really well. Now, something to note, this is only for Windows computers. It won't work on Linux. It will not work on uh, Mac. And another really cool thing about this viewer is that uh, you can close out of editing this, the uh, sky editor or editing your poser and it won't reset you. You can close out to have more screen space and you'll be fine. So it's really cool. And if you are ever done with it, all you have to do, if you open this again, it'll show blank. You have to click on the name every time. If you're ever done, just hit stop posing and it'll go back to that default pose. I, I love it. I think it's so neat. And you completely freeze too. So let's say we stand up and we have an AO going, except for I don't have an AO on this avatar. I already forgot. <laughs> it doesn't work in Black Dragon. But right here, we are just in this awkward pose. We can hit start posing and then you can completely mess with it. You are completely frozen. You can still move your avatar, but you are going to be frozen that way because that is um, how you, you, your poser stopped you. Again, this is only locally. So this is just like how if you were dancing locally, it would be the same thing. You can walk and it'll continue going and it won't, uh, it'll override any poses you're doing because it is on this form. So let's stop posing. Okay, and that's it. I will be doing other videos because uh, Black Dragon has a lot of new stuff ever since the EEP has been released. So we have the Sky Editor. We have all these different things that we can look at. I'm just freezing so much today. We can save our environments over here. We have environment settings over here on which one that we want. We just have a lot of stuff that we can work with. It's pretty cool. So it's, it, I'm ex really excited to show with this with you guys. I'll try and make some EEP settings and stuff, but that's just for another video. This is my last one for recording for today. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It was pretty fun to record. Now I'm going to go nap <laughs> or play more Animal Crossing. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.